<clears throat> Welcome to Zero to 60. I'm your host, Matt McChesney. It is a beautiful Wednesday morning here in the uh, great state of Colorado. Uh, we are coming to you from uh, the studio over here uh, at Zero to 60 on the Believe Network. Uh, like I said, I am Matt McChesney, and we are rolling. Make sure you follow everything at Six Zero Academy uh, all over social media. Make sure you follow the show on Twitch. Make sure you get involved here on YouTube and Twitch today. The Super Chats and the subs are open. Uh, it's just going to be me and you today uh, as Bree is not going to be with us uh, this morning, but she'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we have some great guests coming up here uh, down the road, but today it's just you and I will be answering any and all questions you may have. So welcome to the show on this beautiful Wednesday morning. Like always, the, our show is brought to you by our good friends at Bet Online. Check them out. Uh, Bet Online is your number one source for all of your summer sports uh, this season from Ma Major League Baseball to golf. The NBA and NHL playoffs are uh, rolling. The Nugs and the uh, Timberwolves play tonight in a massive game that I'll be throwing some money on for sure. Uh, all your latest stats and news and scores available uh, as you follow your favorite teams here on Bet Online, you get your latest odds on the very best lines. Uh, it's the most up to date wagering news. You can get the absolute best uh, on your payouts as well. Um, check it out. Everything at Bet Online. Uh, it's where the game starts, and you can use the promo code Believe. That's B L E A V, and get a fifty percent. Uh, bonus on your first deposit. So Bet Online does a great job of bringing you our show, Zero to 60, uh, and we roll. So I'm your host, Matt McChesney. The shades go on, and we have a lot to discuss this morning, uh, to say the least. I was on Coach JB's show this morning. Uh, we had sensitivity class, and then we got to, to talk, so that was pretty fun. Uh, and we roll here. So let me get to the comments. Remember, I've got a computer with one big button and I keep fucking it up. So we'll see. Uh, we really appreciate everybody getting uh, involved here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and, and look, we'll start with some, some Twitch love here. Uh, Twitch user 6782 uh, came from YouTube. Good to see you live. Hey, good, bro. It, it, it's good to have you on the show. We really appreciate you coming on uh, and, and getting involved. Mike Bundy. Hola, hola, Mike. You're always here, bro. And we're uh, we're we're glad to have you on. And yes, oh shit, my brother, this will be a shit show. Uh, Bree's not here this morning, so uh, we'll see. Uh, big quiz notes. Mind if I do a J? I, shit, bro, you do your thing. Uh, you, you know the dude abides. Uh, <clears throat> Mile high vibes. Three oh three. Good morning. Good morning to you, my brother. How's everybody doing out there? Twitch user 6782 again. Good morning to you, my friend. And of course, uh, we had some good conversation yesterday. East Coast Gridiron, good morning to everyone. So we roll here uh, on zero to 60, and we have a lot to talk about this morning. And it's mainly just the correspondence with you. Um, the Nugs have a massive game this evening. We're not going to get too in depth in it, but, you know, I am a huge basketball fan, especially this kind of time of year. The tournament just got done. Hats off to UConn, but the Nugs play Minnesota tonight in a massive game for the division uh, and probably the number one seed if you think about it. So I'm going to be watching that one in depth. Joker looks like he's hands down going to be the MVP uh, for going on the third time. It should have been three straight last year, but they had to let Embiid win one. Uh, so I think the Joker wins the MVP, and I think that you know Denver can take care of Minnesota tonight. They'll be the one seed in the West, and everything runs through Denver, and good luck beating them in a seven-game series. Uh, so that's really all we're going to talk about when it comes to basketball, but I really am it's super excited about the Nugs getting the chance to repeat. Uh, going to the finals last year was super fun. The boys loved it. Uh, so I'm really excited about the potential playoff games and so on and so forth. Uh, before we get started here, uh, I, I wanted to show you guys something, and I, I found this. See if I can do this correctly. Now, this is the the UFL kicker, okay? And I, I can't remember his his on. We return, Trey. Hey, that was Donald. Oh, shit. hey, that was a good form. Hey, that was a good form. Tackle one nine. 
Now, come to think of it, it was not a good form tackle. Uh, you know, he that kid is a social media influencer, and he got an opportunity to go kick uh, for the Brahmas. And he's a good kicker, but uh, he's a specialist, and kickers that tackle with their head down break their neck. And unfortunately, that kid did break his neck, and he's out for the season. <laughs> So it's not a good form tackle. So keep your head up when you tackle and be careful that you're not emulating people who don't know what the fuck they're doing, uh, especially like kickers off of the internet who can kick but can't tackle. So I hope this kid gets healthy, but that is not the proper way to tackle, just to say just to say the least. Uh, so <laughs> look, man, wherever you look, things are going to be found. And I found that yesterday and I just couldn't get enough of it. I thought it was pretty funny. So, look, and neither here nor there, but, you know, kickers can't tackle on top of the fact that he's a social media influencer and now he's in a neck brace. So, see how that goes. Destroying, destroying got destroyed. Yeah. Ugh, God, it's a bad look. All right. Uh, big, uh, big shout out to Mike. Uh, okay, the D-line side defending the zone hybrid. Um, Look, defending the zone, a lot of it, what you can do is you can align uh, how you your fronts. So, like, if you're trying to play a team that runs a lot of, like, zone, outside zone right, outside zone left, so Sparrow and Stallion, the double R, double L, and they're up, they're up at the line of scrimmage quick, they're Sparrow, 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 and they're trying to run zone right, we can put front side nine, three, backside one, like a tilt, so he's attacking that A-gap, and then a four eye on the backside, and the four eye stops the cutback. So sometimes that's a way to counter uh, the the zone. So you you, you know it, it's it, it just depends on the front you're running. If you're in an over under front, uh, those are penetration fronts. If you're in an odd front, that's a wall building front where your interior five are all two gapping, and your outside linebackers are they're your your towers. Those are your two. Uh, v points where you're trying to get the back to stop his feet and run uh, the V to the sideline. Yeah, uh, Twitch user 6782. Yes, he definitely got hurt. Uh, remember that subs on Twitch are open uh, and, and check out Factor as well. Uh, if you go look on Twitch on the bottom left-hand corner, uh, Factor, you get to 50% uh, bonus or 50% off if, if you use our promo code uh and, and i'll be posting that here shortly um but factor is awesome they're doing a great job supporting the show and supporting the gym uh so make sure you go and check them out uh on twitch as well they do a great job yeah he did get hurt he broke his neck he's out for the year yeah that's a, being out for the year breaking your neck on it on a on that kind of play that's uh that's a that's a that's a mean one. From yesterday, Andre Duke, appreciate you, bro. Matt Kirk said he enjoyed being your teammate in Miami and considered you a good friend. Same back to to my man Kirk out there in Miami. I mean, it can't all be nice, but uh, we definitely got along to say the least. A little Colorado Buffalo talk here uh, from Lexus Grant. Do you think Khalil Benson will be our starting right tackle, or should he hit the portal? No, I think he'll be your starting right tackle. Uh, Savion Washington is actually hitting the transfer portal uh, from the University of Colorado. So I think Benson will be your right tackle, not to break news or anything, but that is happening. James, 1982, morning, Big Matt, love the show. Uh, love you uh, getting involved, brother. And here, I'm going to, let me go through my phone here and I'll, I'll put that stuff up here for factor. Um, they do a great job of supporting our show. I probably should have done this beforehand, but you know, players fuck up. <laughs> um, so if you go on to the factor here and you use the promo code factor, SE 48328. Factor SE 42. So F A C T O R. S E four eight three two eight. Bam. And there is your factor promo code right there if you want to go on and get 50% off 
uh, from Factor moving forward. So pretty cool. We appreciate Factor supporting the show over on Twitch. Uh, see if we can get them on. So Andre Duke at the college football level, Matt, uh, it's the tackle's job to be calling out if he's if there's a sack, a stack safety over the same, or if he gives away the blitz. Look, the stack safeties are like mic calls. So when you're looking at a mic linebacker, a lot of people think mic linebacker means you know the uh, the ability to pick the middle of the defense. Now that's not true. The middle of eleven. That's not a thing, okay? It, it's the most dangerous second level defender. So if a defensive, if a defensive lineman is stacked or a Sam linebacker is stacked on the outside, it's usually a force safety or a force corner over that player. And when you have a force player over a defensive end, so if you have a safety nine technique, three technique, one technique, you get what's called a pirate slant. So the defensive end, the three technique, and the one technique will all slant a, ga a gap adjacent, and the Mike linebacker, the the you know the the middle linebacker will roll over the top. The will will replace the Mike, and then you'll have a force safety on the top, so he can keep everything moving inside. And the force player insinuates that he is a contained player. So that that's really what you get when you get stacks like that uh, at the second level. <clears throat> from uh, JD Freedom Nine, Matt, why are players leaving the Buffs? Is Deion a disciplinarian? Look, players are in the transfer portal because that's what the transfer portal is. It's an opportunity to get a fresh start somewhere else. Um, coach, we talked about this yesterday, but Coach Prime is an equal opportunity coach, which means he will he will tell you, you know, the truth, and sometimes the truth hurts. But as a player, you have to respect that. You want a coach that's going to tell you the truth if you're going to be on the team or not, if they want to try and replace you or not. I'm sure he gets everybody the option. You can stick around, but you're probably not going to play here. Um, and honestly, that's all you really want from a coach. That's the NFL way of doing things. That's the way that you want to, to do it, honestly. You don't really want a coach that's going to beat around the bush and kind of like – you know, bullshit you and make you feel that you and in, in some, you know, sort of way are, are going to contribute, but in, in the actuality, you're not, that is not a good thing. So uh, when you look at it from a perspective of like, you know, I, I want the opportunity to play and I want the opportunity to contribute, at least coach prime is giving you the opportunity to go do it somewhere else. If you can't do it for him, and look, they are super active in the transfer portal for a reason. Uh, you know, they're trying to win right now. And the fastest way to do that is to go out and and make sure that you're fortified, you know, through the transfer portal. And everybody knows in college football that if you are a player out there and you're not happy in your situation and you can play, Coach Prime is going to have an opportunity for you in the transfer portal at CU. Let's see here from uh, Luke McLean. Thoughts on Ron Rivera as a coach? Old Riverboat Ron. Uh, at the Riverboat's a good, good coach. You know, was a was a member of the '85 Bears uh, Super Bowl team with Coach Cabral up in Boulder. Um, so you know, there's that connection there. And Riverboat Ron, a, a good coach, not a great coach. Um, you know, does a good job relating to the players. It has overcome a lot. Uh, you know, it, it just happened to run into Peyton Manning when he got his opportunity at the Super Bowl. Uh, that cost him his opportunity at a ring. But a, a good coach, not a great coach. Uh, but we'll probably get another opportunity somewhere. He's he's good enough to to consistently get a job. From Mike Bundy, uh, do clever offenses make fake mic calls? Now, this is a good question. They do make fake mic calls, but it's not how you think. You always point the mic. You always want to point the most dangerous second level guy. But let's just say, for example, you're at 60 protection or 70 protection. 60 protection is four down and the mic. Well, 70 protection is four down and the will. But you always point the mic. So the three technique 
doesn't get the same slide. Because there's a form of three technique, the fastest way to have success is a two-way go. So you want to make sure that you understand when you are one-on-one. -on -one. The uncovered offensive lineman is responsible for the point through the hip of the adjacent player. So if we walk up and we're in like a 11 three by one and they're in a base and they walk the linebacker out and, uh, you know, they're in an under front. So the three technique and the strength point from a, from a, a defensive line and from a, a second level might be different. So right now the three technique, because we're going to slide to the stack over here on the three by side, he thinks he's one-on-one, -on -one, but we're in 70 pro. So actually we're going to the will linebacker that's stacked behind the three technique. So now we're going to slide away and isolate the right tackle and make him one-on-one -on -one rather than isolating the left tackle and pointing all the way out to the, to the three by one side, the three by side in a base look is going to do a walk call. The linebacker is going to walk outside and get stacked by a safety. So he's probably going to be your most dangerous second level defender. So the uncovered offensive lineman has to go for the, the mic most dangerous, but also the guards have to deal with the three technique. And you usually run under fronts to isolate pass rushers. And an under front is the fastest way to get to the quarterback. It's a backside five, three. And both of those two being one-on-one -on -one players, you can run a ton of games. You can isolate, you know, you isolate both of them. So they're both rock one-on-one -on -one guys. So they can both do inside moves. You can do a lot of like half pirate stunts where just that side of the line pinches and you roll a linebacker or a nickel safety. You can do a lot of different things there to manipulate and confuse the offense uh, defensively. So an under front, in my opinion, especially with 99% of the quarterbacks being right-handed, you get to hit them in the back when you win in an under front. And that, that's usually uh, one of the most fun things to do on the football field. I'm losing my voice here a little bit too here, folks. So I apologize if, I sound a little bit like Kathleen Turner. From uh, DD13, DF12, uh, do you think we have a chance to bear Alexander, the D tackle from SC, who was a five-star? How do you build depth if everyone wants to start and transfers uh, to do so? Look, um, do I think we have a chance to bear? Yeah, with Warren Sapp on staff and – and Dion being the head coach and all the, the shine and eyes in Boulder. Yeah, we have a chance at any kid, but it's just a matter of whether or not he wants to come here and compete. Cause I know coach prime's big on that, even though he is big in the transfer portal. Um, look, how do you build depth if no one wants to compete? I, that's a really good question. I don't know how, I don't know the answer to that one. Um, I will say this. Some of these kids are missing out on the opportunity for adversity. And listen to what I just said. The opportunity for adversity. You want it as a young guy, especially. I need to figure out what kind of dude you are, what kind of like heart you have. There's no transfer portal in the NFL. They just cut you. So you need to learn how to compete there because you're not always going to be King Dick. Like, you know, the more five stars are ruined mentally than physically because they think they're special. Uh, you know, somebody else gave you that star. You ain't special. Earn it. So, look, the Bear Alexander kid is elite. But at the same time, if he just wants to be handed a job, I don't know any quality coach in the national or in, in college football that is going to want him if all he wants to do is get handed a job. So handing people jobs is not the way to do things. Number one, you lose all respect and consistency inside your own locker room. But number two, like, what does that tell the kid, too? Like, you can come in here and demand from a coach that you are going to start. I just, I can't get with that. So, you know, if this kid is as good as, as he thinks he is, then he should be able to transfer anywhere and ball the fuck out and earn the job. Uh, personally, I would rather have it earned and worked for than given. Uh, I'm not a big, like, I'm not a big gift guy. I don't need your fucking handout. I'll earn it. Uh, and I prefer my players to have that mindset as well. And hopefully the Bear Alexander kid does. Hi, Bree. Wish you were here. We're off the rails on this motherfucker. <laughs> 
For Mike Bundy, it's rare to listen to a pro who played both sides. I appreciate you, Mike. Yeah, playing both sides of the ball was a very unique opportunity for me. I'm glad I got to do it. It, uh, you know, I didn't have this kind of knowledge before I moved over on to to the offensive side of the ball. So, you know, it it really it really benefited me a ton uh, to be able to play both ways, but also to be able to learn the offensive game of football from the great Bill Callahan. I was so blessed to have him as my first offensive line coach. Hey, remember, like and subscribe on Twitch, on YouTube. Make sure you follow everything. Uh, we got a bunch of eyes in today. Make sure you get in there and 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 and, and jack those members up. Uh, super chats and subs are open. We really appreciate uh, everybody giving back. Uh, Nick needs shoes, so 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 let's get rolling on that front. We really appreciate all of you. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. From Luke McClain, who's your favorite late round pick in this year's upcoming draft? Uh, late round pick. You know, I'm going to go, I don't know if he's a late rounder, but the Roger Rosengarten kid from Washington, uh, I think he's going to be probably a third or a fourth rounder. He is fucking special, super athlete. He'll play for a long time. Um, and then, you know, after that, it, I'm biased, but I think Drake Nugent will be a hell of a pro. Um, and, and, and really be a great player, uh, for whoever picks him third, fourth, fifth round as well. So we'll see if you remember some of the best players, uh, in the NFL, i.e. Max Crosby and such are late round draft picks. So that's where a lot of folks build their football teams. From James, 1982, got a question. You played both sides of the trenches. Uh, what is the difference facing a left-handed quarterback or does it at, DT or doesn't even matter. It, it it doesn't matter um in regard to the play. I mean, playing is playing. I will say it, it matters in uh in regard to pass rush lanes. It matters in regards to you know like the under fronts and the adjustments, uh, and then understanding how they're going to pass that. If you like, for example, in Miami, your right tackle is now your dominant, you know pass protector he's the guy who's got to protect to his backside so as a pass rusher you know that your right the right guard is now your is flipped he's now your point of attack where your left guard is your puller where it's usually left guard's point of attack right guard's your puller so it's it changes up the play actions it changes up a lot of the the pass protection looks it changes up your max protection looks how they're going to chip a lot of the times with a left-handed quarterback they'll chip the three technique uh, rather than just chipping the five. Uh, so you make sure you have a firm and wide pocket. From East Coast Gridiron, I appreciate you, brother. I've seen more defensive ends moving into three technique than dropping in coverage. Is this just because guys are so athletic these days? What is the name for that? Okay, good. Uh, that's called NASCAR, okay? When you see a base to offense and the five technique out there, you know, let's just use uh any five technique. Let's use a uh, fucking Bosa. Okay. And then all of a sudden the next down uh, Bosa is a three technique and they put another defensive end or an outside linebacker, not a five technique. So you got five, three open eight gaps and even, 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 even. So it's over under even odd and bare. Okay. So those Five fronts, you know, odd is a wall defense, bear is five down, over and under are first and second down penetration fronts, and even is a third down front, especially when you get even NASCAR. Then you have your best four pass rushers. So usually the true nose tackle comes off the field, and like your true three technique will move to a one technique, your best five technique pass rusher will move to a three, and then your the next two best outside pass rushers are going to be your two five techniques or a nine and a five. So you have four elite guys up there that can rush the passer. And a lot of the times what teams will do is they'll put a spinner on the field as well. So if you have five guys that can go, you'll have like a stand-up. Like if you saw Miles Garrett this year when he did the crossover and then rushed the center, that was NASCAR spinner. So that means you have five guys down that can rush the passer, which guarantees that you're getting you're in dime with one true linebacker behind, and then man coverage or some kind of shell combo look with a with one bracket because you've got six guys covering the rest of everyone else and five committed to the rush. 
Everybody like the stream. Uh, make sure you do what Bree says and uh, like the stream, please. Uh, we really appreciate it, everybody out there. Let's see what else we got here from everybody. Keep taking notes, kids. I appreciate that, Mike, and that's true. This is what we do. Let's see what else we got here, folks. From Jacob Everson, Matt, you are a pro. I try, brother. Appreciate you. I can be a doormat, too. It's all good. From C. Moses 12, uh, do you believe that we're in an era where the portal is is new so everyone uses it, but the numbers will significantly decrease in a couple of years, years, similar to high school, the pros and the NBA, it's the new norm. You know, I'm glad you brought this up, C. Moses 12. Yeah, I do. I think that eventually people will understand that the – Ability to overcome adversity, the ability to have security, going somewhere and developing as a player, developing as a man or a woman, uh, you know, depending on your sport and your opportunity, developing as a young athlete is more important than just the ability to get it right now, to go start right now. I mean, if you're ready to go start right now and contribute and do all that shit, why do you need to transfer? That's really the key here is guys who want to guys, gals, athletes who want to transfer to go play. If you were ready to play, you'd be playing where you're at. You wouldn't need to transfer. So sometimes the ability to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I think that I could be a better version of myself if I overcome this adversity rather than run from it. If I listen to myself rather than listen to all the squawks of people who aren't involved don't have to do the work um you know i think that the ability to look at yourself in the mirror and understand that you're not as good as you think you are but you're damn sure not as bad as you think you are that's important so i i would think that more people will stick it out in the future uh, and understand that the transfer portal is an opportunity to make money and nil that's always going to be there but this whole like running to the transfer portal every time it gets hard or making sure that I'm a starter and if I'm not going to start, I quit and I'm out. I wouldn't want that kind of kid on my team anyway, so I think it will dissipate, yeah. <clears throat> From East Coast Kev, do you think Coach Prime and Coach Sapp can bring Bear Alexander to Colorado? We just talked about this earlier, but I, I do. I think if, if, if anybody can get him, it's Coach Sapp and Coach Prime. Uh, he's a hell of a player, but again, like we were just talking about, if he's just leaving SC because he's not going to start, then we want people to come here and compete, not people to come here and get handed opportunities unless they're ready. Like, I know that Shador and Travis and Shiloh got handed opportunities. Well, yeah, that's because they're all elite players. Jordan Sidney got having an opportunity. Well, it's because he's an elite player. If you're ready to do it, then that's one thing. If you're not ready to do it and you're just squawking, that's something else. Now, the Bear Alexander kid, I think it seems like he's a hell of a player, so we'll see. Thanks for all the knowledge. Been watching and played in high school, but love hearing the actual breakdown of plays and schemes. Appreciate that, James, 1982. Uh, we'll actually be back at the gym tomorrow afternoon uh, to do some more film breakdowns and things of that nature. So you can check that out on the Twitch page. We'll have that up tomorrow uh, in the afternoon doing that on Twitch. Uh, my man Evan Worthington is at the gym this afternoon. Uh, running through and, and getting all the young guys right as I was there this morning. Uh, there was a hell of a group this morning getting all those older cats rolling. Uh, we'll be back in there uh, from a uh, young guy or from a, an older cat perspective Thursday afternoon, Friday afternoon, and then Saturday morning we'll be doing a ton of pass rush and key read and things of that nature if you want to watch and get involved with that on Twitch. Alex E., are you sending any linemen like Nugent to Michigan? 
we went to physically dominate the trenches again. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, look, they've already got Connor Jones there. He's a hell of a player that's next in line to step up. Gentry is going to be a guy who's going to step up. Hayden Moore is a good player that's there, but Nugent's gone. Atterbury's gone. You know, they they, they cycle out. Uh, and then, you know, the new guys stepping in that have been developing there, especially Connor Jones. I think Connor's going to be one hell of a football player uh, for Michigan. You know, since he's been there, he hasn't played much, but he's been developing. Uh, and that's been a great line in front of him. He's got a national title ring and a couple of Big Ten rings. Uh, and I know that he wants to be a contributor on on a unit that gets those. So uh, I'm really excited about Connor Jones and his future up there, probably next to a guy like Andrew Gentry uh, in the trench. So watch out for Connor Jones. Again, subs and super chats are open. We really appreciate all you guys getting involved. Uh, I know you go on JB podcast, and I love your perspective on the overall state of CU. Why does, in your opinion, the JB looks for anything negative? He continues to call Coach Brian, Brian uh, from Brian Johnson. Look, bro, JB's a hater. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a really good coach, and he knows what he's talking about, but he definitely misses the old school and. He he is really hard on the position of head coach and the position of quarterback, which he played and coached. So I get it. Uh, but he is a hater, and he'll be the first one to tell you that shit. So, I mean, we had to have sensitivity training this morning because I called people bitches on the show. And I kind of brushed it off because I don't apologize uh, for what I said. I said it, and that's what it is. Uh, but, I, look, Coach JB is one of the best in the business of what he does. His opinion is valid even if I think it's wrong. Um, and, you know, he's he doesn't know if there's a lot of substance there where I think there's as much substance as there is shine. So we will see, uh, and I'm praying to God that CU and Coach Prime and Shador and everybody have an unbelievable year. So everybody out there that's hating has to eat motherfucking crow. You bitches. <laughs> God forbid I call somebody a bitch. Don't be too, don't, everyone, don't get offended. Or do. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Mike Bundy, appreciate it, bro. Bree gets it 99% because it works. It sure damn works. V-E-R-K-S. It works. <clears throat> From Andre Duke, Matt, is the gym close to the public? Uh, I might make, make a trip to the bus game this year. Of course, it's not close to the public. We run a gym. All money is green. Anybody can work out there, bro. <clears throat> From uh, Reggie Indiana 76, Matt went nuts on the interview. I loved it. The one with Coach JB. We appreciate the support, bro. Uh, you know, it is what it is. From Cap 93, LOL Smitty was big mad at you today. He wants me to, like, apologize for, for calling him. I didn't really even call him a bitch until at the end when I said, fuck you, bitch, and fuck you, bitch. Uh, but, again, like, we've said way worse shit to each other on that show than that. I'm just kind of surprised that it was sensitivity hour at, on Coach JB's show, but that's okay. You know, and tomorrow we'll bring in a comfort dog and, like, I don't know, pet it. I feel really bad today, so if everybody could, like, Send a bunch of money to go fund me or something that would make me feel better. Or even better, substance super chat because I feel I feel like a bitch and someone called me a bitch. And I'm really, 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 really upset about it. I don't know what to do. Shit. What to do? What to do? <laughs> oh, shit. All right, moving forward here. Uh, Matt, did you see Tank Cook JB a few hours ago? I didn't. I actually got off and I uh, was preparing for this show. Yeah, right. But I just didn't really, I didn't see it. Uh, we appreciate you, uh, our code game. <clears throat> From Cap93, who is the kid in your camp that is a diamond in the rough coming up for college soon? Uh, a couple of them, all right? Um, Deacon Schmidt. Fantastic junior tackle from Windsor has got multiple offers. Really, really good player. Colorado doesn't want to lose him. He's a he's a hell of a, a fucking talent. All right, he's one. Ben Brown, lockdown Ben Brown, outstanding guard and center over to Rappo. Great player. 
Uh, <clears throat> Tanner Gray, the outstanding defensive end quarterback. Uh, he he drives three hours round trip just to come at 5 a.m. and get his work in. Hell of a football player. Uh, Davis Moon, the outstanding uh, to-be freshman over at Ballard High School. Reese Russell, uh, the outstanding to-be sophomore of uh, – uh, son of Matt Russell, the Buckus winner, and a great friend of mine up at CU. Uh, Reese has got multiple offers and is going to be a great lineman uh, from Valor. My son, Nicholas McChesney, uh, is, is actually going to get uh, ranked on 247 here shortly. I'm going to tell him this afternoon. I got to do his profile today for Blair, Blair Andrew Lowe, uh on 247. So Big Nick and Davis Moon are getting ranked going into ninth grade. He'll be at Mount Vista next year. Uh, keep your eye on him, obviously. So Man, uh, there's so many good players in the state of Colorado. That's just a couple off the top of my head uh, that are elite coming up in the ranks, uh, especially the guys out of 6-0. A $2 Chicago backhand. Fucking A, man. Thank you, Andre Duke. That's a cheap Chicago backhand. I don't know if I'd pay for that one, but shit, man. You know, if you're contributing. Uh, from East Coast, Grand Iron, throw 10 bucks at it. We appreciate you, bro. Firm handshakes for the free game. I'm looking, I'm going to buy some merch soon as well, Matt. Matt, I know what you, uh, I know what you don't have to do all this for free, but you're like the only former pro doing this definitely helps me out. Look, man, we, we don't do it all for free, but we, we don't do it for money either. Uh, we try and give back as much as we can. So we really appreciate everybody. Also, you guys don't have to take the time every day to come hang out with us and we, we try and provide as much quality information and as much fun uh, as humanly possible to say, uh, to say the least. So, yeah. Yeah, so also check me out on Cameo. Uh, anybody that's got uh, any questions or concerns, like tips, you want recruiting advice or whatever, thank you, Bree. Um, Cameo is the place to go for that. Uh, it's like the Joker said, if you're good at something, never do it for free, uh, even though we do. Some stuff for free. I don't know if we're good at it necessarily, but I'm pretty good at that. So if you want some tips, head over to Cameo, and I'll get you. Uh, I'll get you hooked up there. So check out the Cameo page, hey, and then check this out too. Uh, I wanted to show everybody uh, the the new body bag. All right, and this is Mustafa Johnson, who just won a uh, Grey Cup with the Montreal Alouettes, uh, and it's a great CU buff. And this is him using the body bag. And if you go to 6 equipment.com, all right, we'll show you the banner here. Let's see if we can find it. You go to 6 equipment.com right here, all right, and you type in the promo code McChesney. That's my last name. And you can get two bags for the price of one. And then you can do something like this. So watch Mustafa work in the 6 Academy body bag. All right, go, Stoff. One, good job. Reset, other side, two. Good, reset, three. Good, reset, cross, four. Nice job, reset, wear it out. Five, nice job, spinner, 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 spinner. Up, nice job, good. Sugar straight, sugar straight. Fire, huh, good. Spinner, 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 spinner. Fire, nice job, give me another spinner. And go on you. Don't worry about me. Go on you. Nice job. Reset. Two more. Your choice. Two more. Fire. Nice job. Last one. Fire. Ah, uh, finish. Good job. Now that's wearing his ass out on the six zero equipment, uh, six zero body bag. And look, put them back to back and start pass rushing, attacking the angles, five points of pressure, things of that nature. It's it's pretty kick fucking ass. So. The, the six zero body bag is where it's at, and we're really excited about it, and we've got them going all over the fucking place. I just sent one to my man Trey Zoom down at Texas A&M. Uh, he'll be on an NIL deal for it. Uh, they're going to Oklahoma and Coach Bill Beatenbaugh. Uh, they are literally everywhere. So I'm, I'm really excited about the one I'm taking up to Coach Prime on Saturday. It's a gift for him, so – uh, it, it's got his logo on it. Shit, it's so fucking dope. I can't wait to give it to him. So, uh, yeah, man, check it out at 60equipment.com and use the promo code McChesney, uh, and you get two for the price of one, just like Bree puts out there right now. Two for the price of one on your 
six zero equipment uh body bag from coach k stokes a great invention it is coach it covers all angles of attack uh we really appreciate you brother and yeah it, Bree, it is fucking dope son super dope <clears throat> from squad supreme coach what's up squad supreme how you doing brother uh, we really appreciate you over on Twitch uh, watching and, and getting it in. Make sure you go check out everything from Factor uh, and 60 equipmentcom All right, folks, if you don't have any more questions or concerns, we're probably going to get off here this morning. Uh, it's a great show. Uh, we really appreciate everybody. Uh, oh, shit, right off the bat, right when we say we're leaving, we're not. From Andre Duke throwing another $10 at us. I appreciate you, brother. How is Texas A&M looking this year? It's the first year under Elko, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, A&M, there's just, bro, they are so, I'm not going to say unrealistic, but their expectations in A&M are just through the fucking roof. So I I, I really, really, really think that uh, that you've got an, an opportunity here if you're a and m to kind of overachieve year one uh and see what happens so i, I think that they're going to be good but again they could be nine and four and people think they had a shitty year uh down at at college station but that place is special and trey zoon is his proud dungeon family and they love the six zero guys they offer the shit out of them and just offered reese and they were offered brett cool jay who's one of the top linemen in the country uh, so, you know, they definitely love the 6 0 kids. My man, C. Moses, uh, 12, appreciate you, bro. Uh, throwing another $10 at it. We appreciate you uh, in the super chats. Uh, good answer on my portal question. Here's a follow up. Uh, what about the sport itself? Do you think we see more guys getting, getting, uh, more guys getting plays early to keep them, or do you still play your 11 best? Look, do I think more guys are going to play early to keep them around? Again, if you can play, and we appreciate you, C. Moses 12, if you can play, you're going to be on the field. If you can't play, you're not. And I, I don't think you do anybody any good just putting a kid on the field because he says he wants to play. If he's not ready, he's, if he's not ready to do it, man, he's going to be, it's going to be hard, hard sell to the other 10 guys. Cause then you're sacrificing like the integrity of the defense of the offense to accommodate someone's ego. Who's not ready to play. So I, I don't think that that's feasible. Um, again, if you are the kind of kid, parent, coach, whatever, you, the, you know, football consigliere, like I consider myself, if you're that kind of guy and and you are all about like I'm only sending a kid here or he's only going there because he's gonna play early and the coach told me, first of all, you're getting played like a fucking Cherokee drum. No coach is actually gonna stand by that. Because if the kid shows up fat and out of shape and he's entitled and thinks that like the world owes him something because the coach told him he's gonna play automatically, well, that's the fastest way to failure. So you know, it's just not reasonable in this game. You've got to be ready to do it. You're accountable to the other men on the field, not necessarily just yourself and your parents' name. Um, you know, that's what you're accountable to every day. But at the same time, once you get into this game, if the accountability level goes through the fucking roof, to say the least. I'm a man, Rob Norris. We appreciate you throwing a throwing a buck ninety nine at the super chat. Thank you, brother. We really appreciate you watching and getting contributing every day. Coach Stokes, appreciate you, bro. Uh, Coach, what is your college top five preseason predictions? So without looking at anything off the top of my head, I think that if we're looking at, okay, we've got four major conference winners. I'll just pick the conference winners. And then you've got 12 teams in the playoff. I'd say your your conference winners this year, um, shit, man. In the in the Big Twelve, I think Colorado wins the Big Twelve and is in the playoff, and I'm a homer on that. Um, I think that, oh shit, I think Penn State finally gets through in the Big Ten. 
or Ohio State. I think Michigan will have a lull. They won't be terrible, but they'll, they'll have a lull. I'll take Penn State and Ohio State as, you know, two of the five. Um, I really like Old Miss uh, in, in at, and Lane Kiffin down in the SEC. I think they're going to shock some people this year. So watch out for the running Rebs. Uh, I think Old Miss is going to be a really, really good football team. And then Florida State, they went and got DJ Alphabet, and they got, they, you know, they just got a bad taste in their mouth from last year, you know, and they're already pissed off at the ACC, and I think they're going to really take it out on them. So I like those five teams moving into next year the most. From East Coast Grenier, who is your underrated coach in college that's due for a head coaching job, in your opinion? Um, you know, he's already a head coach, uh, but I think Ryan Walters at Purdue, um, especially like this, if this hypothetical were to come, let's say Shador goes number one, Hunter goes third, you know, Dion wants to go watch his kids play. They have a great year. And, you know, all of a sudden Coach Prime's resigning, God forbid, and going to watch his kids play. And he rebuilt CU and yada, yada. And all of a sudden, Purdue has a good year next year, and Coach Walters has rebuilt that program. Ryan Walters should be the next head coach in, in, in Boulder. So, you know, I, I think Ryan Walters is a great head coach. I think he's going to—he's an unbelievable defense coordinator. His guys play their balls off for him, and obviously, he's—he's he's a homeboy of mine and a great friend. And I, I just think he's going to be one of the next great young coaches in college football. From Andre Duke, what about Texas in that top five? Uh, I hate Texas so much I can't put them in anything other than the toilet. Fuck them. No offense. <laughs> From uh, Hosa, we're going 10-2 and making the playoffs. That's right, baby. Go Buffs. From East Coast Gridiron, Ryan Walters had the wheels. Uh, moving at Purdue for sure. Yeah, he's got a lot of good players in, and I think they're going to be a nice team next year. From Luke McLean, my favorite war movie. All right, now we're getting into some topics here. Bree needs to get in on these topics. She hates war movies and history, and um, but she doesn't hate it. She just doesn't like it. Um, I'm trying to get her to watch all these war movies, and she's just not going for it. So, I mean, we'll see. Uh, my favorite war movie, probably Platoon, Saving Private Ryan. Um, oh boy, those are two great ones. I love Patton. I thought Patton was a great movie. It's old school, but awesome. Um, Black Hawk Down is a kick-ass fucking movie. You know, it, it, there's there's a lot of really good ones. You know, it, it depends on what you just think. You know. Uh, is a war is a war movie as opposed to like, you know, uh, the action movies. So, Full Metal Jacket, bro. Coach K Stokes, Full Metal Jacket, unbelievably good movie. Your days of finger banging, Mary Jane Rotten Crotch through her pretty pink panties are over. You will give your rifle a female's name because it is the only pussy you're going to be getting. Independence Day is not a war movie, Bree. That this is what I'm talking about, folks. Help! Help! Olympus is Fallen is not a war movie either, Bree. It doesn't work like this. This is this is what I'm talking about, folks. Help! Blue Cheese or Ranch? <laughs> oh God, Bree, you got to get in on this one too. Blue Cheese all day. Blue, I love it. I love, I love it. I don't know why. Blue Cheese is that shit. If I could compare myself to a fictional character, who would it be? It would be a, uh, a combination of Jeffrey Lebowski and Walter Sobchak. If you don't know who those people are, then I don't want to know you. Starship Troopers. <laughs> that movie kicked ass, by the way. 
chunky cheese ass bullshit. And yeah, that's what blue cheese is. It's good for you too. Are me and Coach JB beefing? No, that's just the way we talk to each other. But trust me, we're not beefing. All right, Schmitty's a little mad at me, I think, but I, I don't care. I'm not dating Schmitty, so I don't could give a fuck if he's mad at me or not. He'll get over it. Here's a good one. Uh, for Shaquem Bennett, American Sniper, a lone survivor. Um, you know, shit, they're both so good. But they're both so sad. Lone Survivor's a great movie, but I, I hate watching our guys get cut up like that. You know, I know that's the point of the movie, but I just hate it. So I, it really makes me emotional watching it. You know, so much family in the military and so many guys I know that have been in that situation and you know, got cut up like that. So that really bothers me. But, you know, the, the American Sniper, I just, you know, I, I wish obviously that Chris Kyle didn't lose his life the way he did, but that was a hell of a movie too. You know, I know that like a lot of people hate the glorification, but you know, war is what it is. A lot of men like that shit and it's what built our nation and just be, be easy when you tread that line with me because I come from a military family and I don't, I don't take that disrespect lightly. Uh, from East Coast Gridiron, you and Schmitty head to head on the line. What would the destruction look like? Look, no offense to Schmitty, uh, but I'm a six year NFL vested veteran on both sides of the football. I can play three technique better than he could. I can play guard and eat him alive. He's he's not very big, no offense. Uh, he's what, say, he played at 6'2, 280. I mean, at my prime, I was 6'4, 330. Uh, mean as fuck. And, you know, it's just, I'm not trying to say, you know, it's a, it's a man's game, but at that point it's a man's game. And I, there is no way I would let him, first of all, if he moved to offense, I would obliterate him as a three technique because I was a better three technique than him. And if he played three technique against me at guard, I'll whip his ass there too. And I love Schmitty, but these are facts and that's that. If I'm K Stokes, what's your favorite fight movie, Fight Club? Fight Club. Period. There's rules too, so don't make me reiterate. <clears throat> All right, folks. That's going to be a wrap. I really appreciate everybody here on this Wednesday. Um, Thank you very much for everything. Uh, we will be back uh, tomorrow on the show. I won't be on JB's show in the morning tomorrow, uh, but we will be back on uh, 0 to 60, uh, and we will have Drake Nugent on tomorrow. Finally, uh, the outstanding center from the University of Michigan to talk about everything from 15 years old, starting with 6-0, uh, to winning the national title and about to get drafted uh, from the University of Michigan, and then in there squeezing a Stanford degree in. So uh, like and subscribe. Make sure that you check out everything we do all over the social media platforms. Um, and, you know, make sure that you get your notes set up so you get a, a notification every day that the show is going on. Uh, and then go over to Twitch and subscribe and like there as well. Super Chats and subs are open. We really, really appreciate uh, all of you. Uh, thank you very much for watching and contributing on the show. Um, we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. with Drake Nugent. Uh, and then when we get off with Drake, I'll do a little question and answer. Uh, or maybe we'll do a little question and answer with the big guy. So you never know. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. You have a 100% great day. And we are out.